Hi there, my name is Steve Ingham. Now, I'm a sports scientist and I've spent the last 25 years or so working in elite sport. And I run my own company called Supporting Champions. I'm dedicated to improving the skills and abilities of sport and exercise scientists so that people like you can have an amazing impact on people aspiring to a sporting or health goal. A little while ago, I wrote a blog called A Letter to the 15,000, and it's become known in the industry as a bit of a reality check, really, a bit of a wake-up call for many. I wanted to send you a message, a video, to share with you what it's really about, and so that you can read that blog knowing fully what is required of you. Before I do that, I just want to acknowledge that there is probably a lecturer either here in front of you or has asked you to watch this video, and they're sharing this with you either because A, they're hopeful, maybe concerned or ambitious for your future prospects. B, they know that if you start applying what you've learned to the real world, then you'll probably learn at a deeper level about your subject. And C, they probably want to make our profession better. They want to create a more skillful generation of future sport and exercise scientists, probably better than we ever were. And that matters because that lecturer and the other lecturers around you are a valuable guide. And I would urge you to use them, pick their brains, lean on them to help yourself move forward. They're probably the strongest source of information about your future success that you have right in front of you right now. So what is the letter to the 15,000 all about? Well, if the prospectuses and the open days and module descriptions, if those attracted you to your current course, then the letter to the 15,000 is there to stretch you beyond your studies and to get you thinking about the world of employment from day one of your degree. Most people go into a degree in sport and exercise science full of ambitions, wanting to work in that arena, but strangely, a very, very high proportion of graduates don't come out with the vocational skills required to work in the sports performance or exercise science field. The reality is that you will probably be quite employable, but not necessarily in sport and exercise. Why? Because sports science degrees are good general science degrees that are applicable to the needs of many different businesses. So when a company is looking for a graduate, they're often looking for breadth and diversity of skills and knowledge, and a sports science degree will offer you that, which is great. But if you want to work in sport and exercise science and at a high level, then you've got to get relevant skills. Now you can wait until you graduate, but the likelihood is that if you do, you'll be left behind. And I'm here to tell you that you need to develop working skills now, tomorrow, and throughout your course. There are three typical responses to this. You have the first one, which is the passive response. Sounds a bit much, sounds a bit like hard work. I'll go back to what I've always done and do the bare minimum to get through my course. The letter to 15,000 isn't for you. You just keep cruising, that's fine, I'm sure you'll be happy you probably won't make the most of your studies and there's a reasonable chance that you won't succeed in this field. Then there's the deferring response. Right, that sounds interesting, it sounds important, but I'm really, really busy with my first assignment. I'll do it later. Well, the letter to 15,000 is for you, but you need to switch to action. Deferring means that after graduation, you'll probably have regret. Of the several thousand people who have taken our skills courses, about one third are people who have graduated and gone off and worked for several years in a different field and then realise that they want to make use of their sport and exercise science education and they've come back and they've had to relearn actually what it takes. You should also know that nearly everybody who has taken our courses or the thousands of people that I've considered for jobs have all said they wish they knew. They wish they knew that their skills were not work ready and that they wished that they knew about the realities in work. There's also another response here, which is, hang on a minute, why isn't the course that I'm paying for providing me with all the skills that I need to work? Well, think of it like this. You're going to university to learn the fundamental knowledge and this acts as a base from which you will draw from from the rest of your career and you need to take the time to develop that base and deepen that knowledge. However, on top of that base, you need to build the applied skills, and that takes time too. 
Now you may have vocational skills opportunities at university, such as placements, maybe a placement year, for example, or vocational skills modules, but that's not enough. Not everyone agrees with me on this, but I've seen the other side, what the graduates are like upon graduation. And I can tell you when it means working with the best, they expect the best too. So it's not enough, you have to go further. If you want to increase the probability of getting work when you graduate in this field, you need to do more on top of that. Then you have the third response, which are those who start growing the vocational skill set. And in the blog, I outline the key steps that you need to take to upgrade your vocational skills now while you're studying. If this is you, you'll put time aside each week to develop your skills. You will ask your lecturers, how does this apply to the real world? How would I go about putting this into place with a client? And you will take full ownership of your future by doing what is required to not only learn your subject, but to apply that knowledge to the real world. Volunteer, get out there and work. Make that leap from knowledge to know-how. If this message has caught you by surprise, sorry about that, but it's better for you to know if you're inspired to take action, there are several different steps that you can take, which I can support you with now. First of all, read the blog. Reread it and start clubbing together with like-minded people on your course. You can also join me on a live webinar in the coming weeks where I'll go into more depth on vocational skills about what employers need, what you can do about it. And you can go to supportingchampions.co.uk forward slash webinars where you can get more details. And you can sign up for the Letter to 15,000 online course. And that's, this is a free portion of my performance careers course. The performance careers course is all about really understanding and getting a full lowdown on the different performance careers ahead. And this is a portion about performance mindset. And it's based around the Letter to 15,000. And you can sign up for that course. And it is supportingchampions.co.uk forward slash LT15K. Employability is a bit like a funnel. Only the best will move through the different stages and do the work required to develop themselves. That's the way it's always been. But now there's a proven path that you can follow that will put you in a small group of people that sport and exercise employers want to work for them. Hint, only a few people will. And if you do, you're already a step ahead. All the best with your studies. Make them relevant. And remember, you're the captain of your ship. So steer it where you need to go.